guys, what the flip? It is week 10 of stumbling into success already. Um, I am not a consistent person, so the fact that we've been doing this for 10 weeks is so wild to me. Okay, so I have been babysitting for this girl like every Tuesday night, and it's been so fun, and she's just like such a girly girl, and she always says stuff like, oh my gosh, girl, that's delicious. And now that's like seeped into my vocabulary. I went to the dollar store the other day just to find some stuff for like Halloween crafts. And there was this guy working there and he had a blue bedazzled belt, but not in a way he like, he had a do rag and stuff if that's painting a picture for you. And like, just naturally I saw the sparkles and I like go up to him and I'm like, oh my gosh, that belt is so delicious. Like, <laughs> what? Why did I say that? Another thing that is so random and crazy. Let's let's take a look at me for a second. Do I look like a girl who knows a lot about sports? Like I yes, yes, looks can be deceiving, but in this case, we can judge a book by its cover. This girl right here does not know a lot about sports. Anyways, so I was volunteering at Hope Network's Petals of Promise Gala, which helps single mothers in the Wisconsin area. I kind of just like did whatever they told me to do. So they ended up having me be like the happy greeter and just like greeting everyone who was coming in. And there was this guy there who like he was testing the mics like before the whole thing started. And I was like, oh, he's just like the speaker guy. He's just like giving a speech. And then he like comes outside and he's like talking to me and he's like, oh my gosh, I really like your glasses and your hair is cool and your outfit's fun. Like, I love everything that's going on. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And then I was like, you're the speaker guy, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm the speaker. And I was like, cool. Um, I'm just here doing my job, you know, I'm the happy greeter. And he's like, ah, oh, you don't have to greet me. I was just like checking something out here. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. See ya. Just like a regular conversation that I would have with like any other person on the planet. So anyways, I'm like greeting the people as they come in. I'm like, hey, you here for the gala? You look beautiful. And then this guy, he comes in and he comes back out and I see he's holding like a photo. I don't need this microphone right now. I see he's like holding a signed photo of like a Packer player. If you're like me and don't know a lot about sports, Green Bay Packers, that is the Wisconsin football team. Anyways, so he like comes out with a sign with this autograph picture and I'm like, wait, it's like seven o'clock. Like that's when this event starts. Like I was confused because they were doing different things. Like they had a silent auction going on and they had like a Yanis Antetokounmpo jersey and it was like autographed and stuff like that. And I was like, how did the silent auction, like how does he already have a silent auction prize? if the event just started like I didn't understand so I was like oh my gosh are they doing that already and he's like no my brother's just a big Leroy Butler fan and I'm like oh cool because that like didn't mean anything to me but it meant something to him so I was like oh sick and he's like yeah I just want to keep it in pristine condition so I'm gonna just like put it in the car and I was like okay cool well <laughs> I'll be here when you get back and then he comes back in and he's like, I just got to show you the picture that I got with him. It, it's so incredible to meet him. And I'm like, oh, okay. And he opens his phone and it's the guy that I literally just said, oh, your speaker guy. Like, he was a football hall of famer. Like, he played for our team for like 12 years and like went into the hall of fame. So um, that was crazy and random and probably a flex to people who care about sports. He was a really nice guy though. He was great. At the end, I ended up doing like this raffle thing. So not the silent auction, but they were raffling off different prizes. And I was just like walking the prizes to him and he was also picking the tickets out. So he was kind of busy in between. So I was just being goofy, like no one seemed to mind. And I'd be like, ooh, ah. They gave each of the volunteers a ticket <laughs> for the auction and I was like okay I'm gonna be busy like running things back and forth for the raffle like gave my ticket to my friend just like let me know if my ticket wins something because I never win those things I never do so I was just like yeah whatever Let's check this out $25 $25 $25 $25 $25 I want $150 worth of gift cards to this Caribbean restaurant in Milwaukee so um that was sick and awesome and cute yeah so that's the vibe that I've been on and just like trying to be the best version of myself 
And I was contemplating even making this the topic of the video today because truly nobody cares when you're trying to do better for yourself. And I'm not saying that like in a negative way. It's just like people just care about the results. They don't care how you got there. They only care how you got there when you're successful. I believe so firmly in my glow up and my success that I can make this video today and this will be an interesting thing for people to eventually look back on. After I started like processing some of the things of being essayed, like after that it just didn't feel safe for me to be like girly and soft. It like... It just, like, after being essayed, it didn't feel safe for me to be, like, girly and soft. And it's just so nice. I'm having, like, a difficult time trying to figure out how to, like, articulate my feelings to you. Because for a while, it's just, like, I didn't want to be perceived. And, like, I don't know how to, like, explain that in a way that sounds normal. But, like... I wish for the longest time I could just be like a floating orb of light, which doesn't sound normal. Like I just, I just didn't want to be a person. I didn't want people to perceive like what my body looked like, what I looked like as a human, like what my gender was, just like anything about me. Like just don't. And it's also really strange to talk about things because it's like some of the things that I'm talking about weren't that long ago so it's really wild to just like take a look back at a couple months and then just just having such like a healthier mindset about everything I'm a very like high functioning person I could be like struggling I could be at my rock bottom and some people aren't gonna know how low that low is for me because I don't let people see that. It's weird giving people a glimpse into that reality and it's just like such a vulnerable part of me that it's just like I wanted to hide from people. It's hard for me to like find words for it. So here, here are the facts that are as true as a deep blue. So um, getting into it, when I was working at Disney I wasn't allowed to dye my hair because you had to have natural hair. And then when I left Disney, I was too scared to have colorful hair. I really, really, really wanted colorful hair. And I was too scared because after being essayed, I was just like, this is going to draw too much attention and people are going to look at me and then people are going to do bad things to me. So I was just like too scared to do that. But um, slowly over time, like people didn't realize like what huge steps these were for me, but they were like secret successes for me. So what was going on is I started by getting like, what is it called? Like balayage or like ombre. I got like the ombre hair. So it's just like it was slowly getting like blonder as it went down. And then eventually that went into me like turning blonde and then it was like blonde blonde. And then since my hair was so light, I was finally able to add color. But I was really nervous about it still, even though it was like a few years later. And um, I started by just bringing some purple hair dye and putting like the smallest streak in my hair. My friend Andres was laughing about it because it was just like so small. And he kind of was like making fun of me. I ended up just like taking the whole bottom section of my hair and like turning it purple and it went to like the pink and the red and then eventually I was just putting all these colors on my hair. People think I like cut all my hair off because it was damaged. My hair wasn't damaged. It was in beautiful condition. Um, it's just like I wasn't taking care of it. Sad and gross to admit. I took it out of the bun and this one section was like matted and like literally had mold in my hair. It felt like for so long I started like being defined by my hair because people knew me as like the colorful hair girl or what's she gonna do next, you know? Again, I wasn't taking care of it and it only looked good like once every two weeks. So I was like, you know what, whatever. Like I could wear wigs, I could do different things. You wear wigs. Will you wear wigs? Then will you wear wigs? So I was just like, you know what, I'll, I'll just cut it all off. 
I'll just shave it off and then I could do like fun designs in it like it would be a really fun thing and then I don't have to like worry about styling my hair every day so I shave my hair off Dude, I wore a wig every single day because I was babysitting for a family and they love me so much they're so sweet but like I was so worried like because when people think shaved head they think like Britney Spears mental breakdown you don't want people to think like mental breakdown and babysitter in the same sentence like Someone who's in charge of the well-being of your kids, like, not being mentally well, like, <clears throat> seems questionable. So I was just like, okay, I'm gonna wear a wig and no one will know. So I was really living my Hannah Montana fantasy. And I was loving it. I was feeling fierce. And I was like, okay, cool. So this is gonna be the beginning of my health journey now. I don't have to worry about my hair. I'm just gonna, like, focus on going to the gym, doing my thing. At that time, that is when I realized I had an underlying fear of going to the gym because I was essayed and when the person sexually assaulted me they said it was because like my body was so nice so I had like this underlying fear that if I had a nice body like people would do bad things to me try to go to the gym and then like when I would start to lose weight I would just like binge eat a lot and just like gain it all back so that was weird and that was like a weird thing that I was battling with. That's already a lot to unpack. But at the same time, I also was taking a medication for ADHD. And that medication made me feel so insanely depressed. I was thinking of like escapism plans nonstop. Like, I think I've talked about this before, but I had this fantasy where I wanted to like run away to Florida and just work amongst the dolphins at Discovery Cove. And like that was literally just because like I didn't want to be here. I wanted to get away from everyone because I was just so sad and I hated everything about my life. Anyways, I was on this medication and it made me like really sad. It's a medication. It just helps you focus. And... Like for me, like being with children just like comes so naturally to me. So it's like, I don't really have to think about it. It's kind of just like second nature to me. So having a job as a nanny and still like taking that medication every day, it was just like not great because the medication would want me to like focus on something. So it would just be like, okay. It would put me into this rabbit hole. It would like grab a negative thought and just like take me into a rabbit hole about it. It would be like, none of your friends like you. Everyone hates you. And it was so horrible. And I felt so bad every day. And then finally I was like, dude, I think it's this medication. Like I just came to that conclusion. So I was like, I gotta stop taking this. If you are on like a mood stabilizer, like anti-anxiety, anti-depression, like anything of that nature, don't stop taking it, especially without consulting your doctor. For me, my doctor literally told me like, if you don't have like stuff you need to focus on, like you don't need to take it. And like, sometimes you might just like need to take this medication when you're in college and then you don't need it anymore, different things like that. So I knew it was okay for me to stop taking it. I just want to make that clear. So. I stopped taking the medication and wowee, I started feeling better, whoa. But then what ended up happening was I guess the medication like makes your metabolism go really fast. So when I stopped taking it, I was gaining five to 10 pounds a month. I would buy something in like two months, like it would not fit at all. None of my clothes fit. So I was feeling a different type of depression, but the depression was like, prompted by my clothes not fitting. I ended up like gaining 70 pounds from that and then I wasn't able to work out still because I was scared but now I was just 70 pounds heavier without being able to work out and oh my gosh yeah then I just completely didn't want to be perceived by people. I was extremely overweight, all my clothes was ill-fitting and I had a shaved head so yeah. So yeah, when you have all those things to consider, <laughs> now it is it starting to make more sense why I would want to just be an orb of color, you know, just just an, a light orb, you know, <laughs> like just an orb of light, just my aura floating in the air with 
no confine of a body <laughs> you know like you'll just see that I have a beautiful soul you don't need to see the body that is like holding it I wasn't really liking myself too much I wasn't really feeling myself too much and I was like okay let's just avoid these feelings let's just I don't want to say that's where my doll obsession came in, but I was just like, okay, I can make these beautiful and I didn't have to like think about myself. I do my doll's hair and like escape reality, you know? That's how things were going for a while and then it's just like, ever since I made the video five weeks ago, I just feel like such a release and I just feel, I don't know. I just feel like it's a new era. Just release that and leave it in the past and like move on with my life because that's all I've wanted to do. I don't want to seem like oh I was like relying on other people to show me that support but I think other people showing me that support has given me strength but that's why I'm trying really hard to be like rooted in myself so that no one else's opinions of anything will define me. But yeah, I'm just really optimistic for the future. I'm really excited for all the things that are in store. It just felt like I was chasing after these butterflies and I wasn't able to catch them. And now it's just like I'm building these habits and having like a support system and building a foundation. It's instead of like chasing after these things, I don't want to chase it anymore. I want to attract it. So I'm gonna build this beautiful garden and put in these flowers and then the butterflies are gonna come to me. And yeah, it takes some time for <laughs> the flowers to grow and we gotta get our hands dirty and dig in the mud and plant the seeds and stuff, but it's gonna be so freaking worth it. So I've talked about these before, but this has like been incredible for me. I have these little like scratch off papers and you could write notes on them. So I have a bunch of like inspiring notes all around my room. And then another thing is I made them as like a checklist. The things that I've been implementing, I've been getting like 10,000 steps a day. I've been keeping track of like going on the treadmill. I've been reading 10 pages a day, I've been journaling, just things like that. And again, like I said, I wasn't super great with like, you know, like my hair care and stuff before. So I also have it for like putting on like daily lotion, brushing my teeth at night, things like that. What I do is I give myself, can you see that? There we go. What I do is I give myself a tally mark and it's just cool to see all the effort you made. I also have this little guy and I love him so much. And his tongue is felt and it sits inside a water bowl and then it soaks all the water up and waters the plants. This is so corny, but like this little kitty cat, he inspires me so much. Like, I got this and it was just a thing of dirt. And I put the seeds in it and it was so like, watching the seeds slowly grow into sprouts. Now the sprouts are getting bigger and they're like reaching towards the sun. And it's just like every day I look at this while I'm doing my makeup and I just I can't help but like think about myself and be like, oh my gosh, I'm growing. But yeah, I seriously like get so inspired by my plant and just like knowing that it's thriving and doing good because I'm taking care of it and I'm watering it and like I'm watering myself. So, oh, I love it so much. Sorry for being cheesy, but I'm so for real when I'm telling you these things. I'm so serious, dude. It's not your fault if you're messed up. It's your fault if you stay that way. So, here's towards being the best version of ourselves. Don't just be bystanders. Let's grow and glow together. So, I'm going to plant these seeds. This will be for us. This will inspire us. Uh, I'll show you guys updates every week. Oh, plant progress. Guys, I accidentally put a lot of water in here. It is like a seed soup right now. Um, there are some rocks in this container, so hopefully the water will like slowly filter out, but ooh, -hoo -hoo. 
we are off to an interesting start. Okay, that is the video for this week, but I will see you guys next time. Also, as a little experiment, I want to see who made it through the whole video. So if you watch this entire video and you hear me talking right now, leave a heart in the comment. I don't care what color heart. Red, black, blue, whatever. Whatever. Just leave a heart in the comment so that I know you're a supporter from day one, okay? Because trust and believe, guys, this is a success story in the making, alright? <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys next week.